Not too far away from Southeastern Louisiana University in Hammond is Tickfaw. G.W. Neesom was one of the first white settlers there and has left his mark for many generations. In fact, some of his kin still live the life more resembling their grandfather's time than that of today. And in some parts of this community, all you see are signs of a very cherished past. Tickfaw, Louisiana is located in the southern portion of Tangipahoa Parish. The name Tickfaw originated from the Indians, meaning rest among the pines. At least that's how third generation Tickfaw area resident Sue Hamilton recalls. From what we understand, um, the railroad was putting, putting in the railroad track down through this area. And so every 10 miles, they were putting a milestone, you know, and putting in a station. And uh, they named all these stations t uh, Indian names. And so Tickfall, it means rest among the pines. Sue is a good source of local history, as is her burly big brother, Jim Jenkins. Back in the late 1800s, Sue and Jim's grandfather and grandmother helped shape Tickfall. George Wilburn Neesom moved into the area in 1897 and would later marry Cornelia a few years later. This unlikely pair of a six foot six man and a five foot three woman was key to Tickfaw's early days. George opened up the general store, which would employ up to 28 people during its heyday. GW would also become Tickfaw's first postmaster, a position he would hold for 35 years. Well, I've heard a lot of tales uh, about him, and I uh, have inherited uh, a lot of uh, his characteristics. Uh, somebody comes along and says, let's go hunting to me, uh, I drop whatever I'm doing and I'm on my way. Uh, he was that way. Across the street from the general store stood a beautiful two-story structure that would become home base to the Neeson family for generations. Now this beautiful Victorian home was built in the early 1900s by three men, including Tickfaw's first postmaster, George Neesom. Now the story goes it took these three men three years to build what would easily become Tickfaw's centerpiece home. We had lots of uh, fun there. We had lots of parties and uh, my mother loved and daddy both loved to have people. They were people you know, uh, friendly. They love to have people come in. In fact, the home still entertains guests. Back in 1995, the home was restored by Rosalind and Donald Semino and Rose Lowenthal. After two years of renovations, it opened in 1997 as the G.W. Neesom House Bed and Breakfast. The home is listed on the National Register of Historical Places. And the Neesom home will remain a cornerstone to Tickfaw for future generations. Meanwhile, Brother Jim feels pretty good at his home just down the road. Time stands still here with an array of old farm equipment that still works. And around here, the progress of the 21st century is no match to Jim's sugar mill and blacksmith shop. Okay, this is a cane mill that we use to squeeze the sugar cane. I've already got some cane there for about a week, week and a half from now we'll be squeezing and making syrup. Okay. Run it over into a big pan and then cook it for four or five hours. And you also have a blacksmith shop? Yeah. How about yeah. you showing it to me? Got tongs and hammer here in my hand. Well, <laughs> blacksmith shop's right out here. That's a, a coal fire, uh, soft coal, bituminous coal, and uh, they blow air into it, what this blower does, to make it burn fast. Jim forges architectural hardware, things like door latches and ornamental gating. In fact, some of his work can be seen at the Cabildo in New Orleans. And in this quick show and tell, he's going to turn this metal rod into an ornamental leaf. <laughs> I love it. This family has left its mark in many other ways. The Methodist Church is named after G.W. Neesom. That's fitting since the first services were held under the tree of the G.W. Neesom house a century ago. And with a long line of teachers in the family, the elementary school was named after longtime educator Lucille. So under the canopy of the tall, restful pines, 
there is a family that has forged a proud legacy in Tickfall. It is tough as nails. It is also warm and inviting as Grandma's Feather Bed. GW Neesom also helped organize Hammond Junior College, and that is now Southeastern Louisiana University. It's also located just five minutes away from the Neesom House. Well, that does it for this edition of Lost Louisiana, What's in a Name? From a bunky monkey to a zwali tamale, I hope you've enjoyed the ride. And like the racehorse LeCount, we have hit the finish line. Hope to see you again for another edition of Lost Louisiana.